Cooking Together Generations. Today we are going to be introducing a new segment. This is going to be the first episode of Tom's Tips. So Grandpa is going to start doing some episodes here where he gives us some tips in the kitchen. And today we're doing kitchen safety. So kitchen, I'm, kitchen safety. I'm going to toss it over to him. Okay. Go ahead. Show Folks, us how to stay safe. But if you just look around the kitchen, I got Fireman Chris back here behind the camera. You just look around the Chris kitchen. There are accidents ready to happen here. You can see them. We've got electricity. We got water. We got fire. We got hot grease. We got hot things. So we're going to start out number one. We're going to start out at the stove. At the stove, when you're cooking, please make sure you turn the handles away from the edge of the stove so that you don't walk by an accident and hit this and spill it all over yourself. Turn them away. Now we're going to talk about a fire on the stove. If you have a fire on the stove, there are a couple of ways you can take care of it. Number one, if it's in a pot, simply cover it, starve it from the oxygen because that's what's going to flame it. If it's in a pot where you don't, you want to, you've got baking soda, which I keep right by the stove. Take it out, sprinkle it on it, and suffocate it with that. Or, if it's a serious fire, and you notice I'm moving away from the stove to over under the sink where I kept the fire extinguisher. The reason I've got it over here is if the fire starts here, I don't want the fire extinguisher down there where I can't get to it. You want a BC fire extinguisher, correct, fireman? He's shaking his head, yes. Have one of these. You probably won't need it if you have something simple covered with a lid. Throw a little soda on it. Do not, do not throw a cloth on it because the cloth will catch on fire. And that's, that's sometimes the natural thing to do. Also, when you're working around the stove, make sure you have hot pads, gloves. These are great if you can find them, folks. These are barbecue gloves, but you put these on, you can't burn yourself with them. Going to move over here. To the cutting board and we're going to talk about knives real quick make sure your knives are sharp it's easier to cut yourself with a dull knife than it is a sharp knife now this is a cleaver i guarantee you if i had a cat and i had a cat here and could hold it i could split it on there this is really sharp make sure you use the right knife for the right chore do not try to cut a raspberry <laughs> or a grape with a cleaver you want to use a paring knife Okay, and make sure we've seen this, you've seen this before. The way to grip the knife is here, and when you chop, keep your fingers back like that. You can slide it right along your fingers and you can cut. The other thing is, we want to talk about cutting boards real quick. There are three kinds of cutting boards. I'm only going to tell you about two of them because the other one I don't want you to have. Do not use a glass cutting board, glass cutting boards are hard to use. Number two, they dull your knives. And number three, they kind of slip. Use a plastic or best is butcher block. And everybody's going to say, well, the butcher block absorbs the stuff and you're going to get, you know, you're going to get disease from it. That's not true. It's proven that the butcher block, the wood does absorb, but it kills the back teen immediately. When you use your cutting board, the best way to do it, you can use hot water and do it, or we use, we keep a little thing, a solution of bleach, which this is half and half, put a little bleach on it, wipe it down, and you're clean. Also, make sure that you wash your hands when you go from the chicken to the tomato for the salad, okay? We've covered those things. Next thing is, when you put a knife into your dishwater, make sure you put it with the handle towards you so that when you reach in there you know how to get the knife out and if you're cooking together and you're cooking with a partner be sure and announce knife in the water so that they know there's a knife in there they will cut themselves last thing let's move over here towards the toaster and this is a temptation for a lot of people the toast sticks so what do they do they grab a pair of tongs now that toaster's on and that's electric. They try to get that down in there and get that piece out. Well, somebody's going to get fried. Make sure you have wooden tongs if you have that kind of a problem. Microwave. If you have a fire in the microwave, it's pretty simple. Close the door and turn it off. Turn it over later it'll go out. Don't open it up because that'll feed the oxygen. The last thing, last two things, is clothes. Make sure, number one, that you wear shoes. Because dropping a knife, and you can see right there on the floor, 
A few of them have dropped there. <laughs> I've done all these things, folks. <laughs> I uh, take my word for it. I've tipped the pan off there and burned myself. I've ca had caught fires. In fact, I about burned the deck down when you're at the grill. When water from a rain get into the get into hot grease. So make sure your clothes aren't loose. Make sure your clothes aren't some of the new fibers that melt. If you get too close to a little grease on yourself, melt, you can get a bad burn. Third thing is, last thing, you see us doing it. You see me doing it. I have a little glass of wine when I'm cooking. It's all right to have a little glass of wine for your cooking, but don't have five glasses of wine when you're cooking. <laughs> Nothing worse than not being able to coordinate when you're cooking with the hot grease and everything. So those are my safety tips. Uh, next time we'll have some cooking tips of some kind. So thank you for watching and we'll see you again next week on Cooking Together Generations.